What is going on everyone out there in the YouTube trucking community? Sean Cahill and Christian Brother Trucker coming at you again with another video today. And today's video is going to be centered around safety and a little bit of a rant. A minor little rant, not a big one, but um, I'm going to tell you a little story. And then I'm just going to tell you my personal opinion and feelings about... Uh, you know, being safe out here, doing the right thing, and making sure that you have a long, successful career out here. Um, I'm going to name this video, Check Your Trucker Privilege. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because having a CDL and um, being a professional truck driver... Um, the CDL is a privilege, not a right. And with that comes a certain responsibility and attitude that needs to be centered around safety. Um, and I was, when I first started in my career, I was one of those super truckers, you know. Um, I used to drive a big flat nose Peterbilt 387 or 379, whatever it's called. Um, pulling flatbed and I used to speed everywhere I went. I had a 70 mile an hour truck and uh, if I was going downhill that thing was doing 80, 85 um, and I went 70 everywhere I went as much as I could and I had the tickets and the points on my license to prove it and uh, I used to have that attitude that you know everybody's in my way and I'm in a hurry to get there and I didn't run my time effectively, and I just had the general overall bad attitude, and I'm, you know, basically gave myself a mild and nervous breakdown and stepped out of trucking for a long time and then came back to it. Um, this morning I was, I was in Green River, Wyoming, and I walked into Love's and, um, was getting a cup of coffee and I was talking with another driver another driver approached me and asked me a question about the uh, Colorado Rockies and I told him I said well when I came over last night it was you know fairly wet because the snow was melting but it wasn't snowing and it wasn't really icy and uh, he said that he didn't have chains on his truck and he was under the assumption that if he got caught without the chains that the company was going to get a fine but not him and I quickly told him I said no you're you're the one that's going to get the fine along with the company is going to get a fine as well um so you know that's something that you just don't want to do you don't want to be caught on any of these major major passes when the chain lights are on and you don't have the proper equipment and if you get pulled into a DOT check station anywhere in Colorado, I think, I'm not really sure, there might be a specific spot here or there, but if you get caught without the chains, uh, you're going to get a ticket and you're going to get shut down. And I asked him, I said, well, you know, don't you think that you should get some chains if you're going to be going over the Rockies? And uh, and he was like, oh, no, I, uh, you know, the company won't pay for it, so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, after the fact, I was like, you know, if your company won't pay to have chains on the truck, which is required by law, are you driving for the right company? I think not. Um, that's just my personal opinion. If your company knows that you're going over the Rockies, your company knows that you're going into these mountain passes, and they're not going to provide you with the equipment that you need to do your job, uh, go find a different company. Um, seriously. Because, you know, it's just a matter of time before you get caught. It's just a matter of time before you start getting tickets. And if you get tickets, it goes, those points go on your license. And, you know, heaven forbid, if you get into an accident because you don't have the proper chains, you know, I mean, how many times have us drivers been out there, been hauling, hauling up and down these passes and seen trucks slid off in the ditch because they didn't put the chains on? Um, it just astounds me you know um it was really crazy 
And then another time, uh, this was a while back, I was, I had my air hose out. I've got a big uh, 50, 60 foot long air hose that I use to fill up the uh, tires, check the tire pressures on the trailer. And he walked, this other driver walks up to me and goes, hey, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm just airing up some, some low tires on my trailer. And he goes, well, you know, if it was me, I would just uh, call a road service truck out to, uh, you know, so that they can call out a road service truck to put air in my tire. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, you know, that's just the next level laziness where you can't put air in your own tire. I, that kind of flabbergasted me too. Um, but today I'm driving through California and you know, when I'm driving in California, I won't go over 60. Speed limit's 55, I'll go between 55 and 60. And uh, I had this driver that was, he was loaded, heavier than me, I was lighter than he was, and so I passed him going up a hill. And then uh, he would keep going around me and passing me, but he was only wanting to do one mile an hour faster than what I was going. So he'd pass me and then we'd go up another hill and I'd, I'd pass him because he'd have to slow down to, you know, 45 mile an hour. And then here he'd come again. And I, you know, I was driving along with this guy for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. You know, each, each time that you pass a truck, each time that you sit beside a truck and you're going side by side, it increases the chances of something going wrong. Um, you know, I just, I don't understand why he wanted to do one mile an hour faster than me, why he wasn't okay with just scooting in behind me, backing off, and, uh, you know, setting the cruise control or whatever the case may be and just staying behind me. Why did, why did he feel the necessity to keep passing me over one mile an hour? So I, I sped up, I think, to 66, or no, not, not 66, 61. And uh, I think eventually he he sped up to 65 to come around me. But again, it's like, um, you know, he didn't get anywhere by increasing his speed four miles an hour. And then I'd go up another hill and I'd be passing him. So all that extra work and effort to try to act, to try to feel like you're getting ahead, but you're not really getting ahead because... You know, the guy was right there the whole time. This was going on for probably a good hour and a half. But where are you going? You're not going anywhere. You know, you're going to go through all that effort of passing me when you know that I'm lighter than you. So eventually I just threw on my Jake brakes and I slowed down to, to 55 and let him pass me. And then I backed off and I just let him go. But again, I come up on another hill and, you know, I pass around him and then he's going to pass me again. It just... It, it's like, don't y'all get it? Just chillax, slow down, take your time. It's so stressful to be driving that way, driving aggressively like that. So anyway, that's my message today is check your trucker privilege. <laughs> Let's be safe out here. Everybody calm down and just slow down when you, have, when you need to slow down. I drove through Las Vegas and that was pretty sketchy. Everybody was in a hurry to get through Vegas. Boy, let me tell you. Dangerous drivers out there. You know, I've been driving for eight years. So there's a reason why I've been driving for eight years. It's because I slow down and I take my time and I'm safe. So, public service announcement, folks. Slow down and be safe. Take your time. Manage your time better. Or something. Otherwise, you're going to be getting tickets and be getting fines. And ultimately, you may end up having an accident because you're taking chances that you shouldn't be taking. So if you like this content, please like and subscribe and share. And as always, thanks for watching. God bless you all.